people, and we're here trying to hold the gate up, and they're going, there's no enemy behind that gate, as, as you know, arrows shoot over the parapet at us. Again, you know, it's, it's what we have right now to me is very reminiscent of prior to World War I. You have a lot of inept, incompetent sociopaths and psychopaths, whether they're in government or the military, that are leading the people to destruction over nothing. And, you know, going back to the, the jobs, here, Home Depot plans 80,000 new hirees. Amazon, 2,500 new workers. Okay, Home Depot, 80,000, right? Once upon a time in America, there were these things called hardware stores, and you could own one. You had one on your block, in your neighborhood, in your village, in your town. If you lived in a city, they were all over the place, owned by individuals. Now it's controlled by the multinational. 80,000 slave landia jobs. Oh, wow. But it's worse than that, as you know. They cut most people from 40 to 20 hours, not just 30. And then they went out and hired other people. So it's all part time like Walmart now because they said we want to keep our workers at the level to get welfare to supplement their job here. Walmart's on record. So that's not 80,000 new jobs. Exactly. And then you have Amazon. So all you young boys and girls out there that want to get a college degree, a B.A. or a B.S., you could get one in packing and shipping because those are the kind of jobs. Except they're putting get. robots in now to replace them. Now, this is from CNBC today. Just to show you how far out of touch everybody is. This is the headline. Luxury CEO. The poor should stop whining. Now, this is from Bud Kohnheim who is the head of Nicole Miller, which is a luxury fashion uh, 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 product. They sell luxury fashion sh shop. He said, we've got a country that the poverty level is wealth in 99% of the rest of the world. So we're talking about woe is me, woe is us, woe is this. The guy that's making, oh my God, he's making $35,000 a year. Why don't we try that out in India or some countries we can't even name? China, any place, the guy is wealthy. That's how out of touch they are. Yeah, their new argument is, but the cost of living here is a lot more. 10, 20, 30 times what it is in Africa oh, or India. This is, this is a guy. That's no, no, that's a new thing. The, no, no, I saw an article last week in AP. The new rich make $4 a day. The new middle class. Gerald, in fact, that's my next piece. And I don't mean to do this. It's horrible, but I'm skipping the network break because I promised to go to calls. But I've got to play okay. this for you because I want you to hear this Leanne McAdoo report from InfoWars Nightly News. And uh, this aired uh, last night, or, or actually, I guess, on, uh, on Tuesday night. No, no, it was on Monday night. And this is the new austerity. At Whole Foods, they have the magazines everywhere. It's like, be a hobo, be poor, don't have a job, don't take a bath, uh, live in a garbage can. You've got the Agenda 21 professor, that's his department at UT, the learned helplessness, uh, artificial scarcity thing, saying we all need to learn to live in 200-square-foot apartments so you can pay more in taxes to the political class, that's their plan, is make us so poor so they get more. Obama tells Africans you can't have uh, air conditioning or a car ever, but he's you know got a fleet of jets. It's literally their plan to make us poor and controlled, and she went out uh, to do a report on this. So, so you talk about raise the quality, demand more quality? No, no, this is about, no, no, lower quality is good, but only for us. Talk about a mind game. Here is her report. I want to get your take on it, Gerald, then phone calls. Talk about trashing the American dream. A Texas professor is going to be living inside of a dumpster for the next year. Dr. Jeff Wilson moved into his new digs on Tuesday in an experiment designed to show students and the world that humans can live on a smaller scale and lessen our environmental footprint. Outfitting the tiny space is step one in this trash can challenge, and the goal is to design the dumpster to be as energy efficient as possible with solar panels and an energy-producing toilet. Wilson jokes he's part of the 1%. 
saying his space is 1% the living space of the average American home, using just 1% the water, see, that's energy, good. and waste. Professor Dumpster, as he's lovingly referred to by his students, says the idea here is to ultimately show one can have a pretty good life in a dumpster. Oh, and the dumpster diving professor says that he's going to be transforming his trashy home into a capsule hotel by the end of the year. Much like the kind being called home in Japan, built for salary men who missed the last train home, tiny capsule hotels are now the homes of last resort for Japan's unemployed. Looking more like a stack of washing machines, they're six and a half foot by five foot rooms that contain a bed, a TV, and a pair the of coffins. Cases. But it seems the professor is just preparing the community for the coming tiny apartments that cities are toying with as an answer to overcrowding and the need for affordable housing. Micro units, apartments of 500 square feet or less, might be Austin's next big building trend. And that's because they the restrict all the other buildings. The thing here is that for those of us who can't afford it, the answer is to just shove us into tiny little boxes like a can of sardines and then just culturally normalize it so we don't realize that we're actually being caged. Recent studies show that living in tiny spaces can actually be sizably hazardous to your health. According to Dal Kopeck, Director of Design for Human Health at Boston Architectural College, the space-saving trend of tiny apartments can lead to increased claustrophobia, domestic abuse, and alcoholism. On top of that, researchers believe that children need bigger spaces to flourish. They say children raised no. in confined spaces can end up becoming withdrawn and have trouble studying and concentrating. They just need video Professor games. Professor Wilson's dumpster has the stench of Agenda 21 all over it. That's the globalist plan for the 21st century. It's not what is Agenda 21, it's almost what isn't. It is the blueprint, it is the action plan to inventory and control all land, all water, all plants, all minerals, all construction, all animals, all means of production, all energy, all information, and all human beings in the world. It is a completely comprehensive plan. It's global and it's implemented locally. This map, entitled The Simulated Reserve and Corridor System to Protect Biodiversity, illustrates how the UN's Agenda 21 plan would work in the United States. Under this takeover, all personal property rights would cease to exist. The majority of the map is red zoned, mandated for little to no human use. Yellow zones are buffer zones for highly regulated use. Only in the scant green areas is normal human use allowed. The tiny black dots are the dense megacities where transportation will be tightly controlled, freedom will be restricted, and people will be packed in like sardines living in tiny units no bigger than a jail cell. Wake up, America. Under Agenda 21, in the name of sustainability, we are building our own prisons for the greater good. All right, that's Leanne McAdoo's excellent report. And again, in their own documents that we've covered here, it's not that it's affordable to have something small and lowering standards. It's they're going to raise taxes to where you only get like 5% of your money. Then you go to these big things owned by Bloomberg and others who's pushing it, and you pay $10,000 a month for a 200-square-foot coffin. I mean, this is diabolical. Gerald Salente, you talk about raising the quality. 50 years ago, McDonald's started putting signs up saying thank you as if you were supposed to throw away your own trash. And then now everywhere's dirty. No one picks up the trash, not just McDonald's, anywhere. And it, it, it's, it, it's again, it's about training us to be animals. Gerald Salente. Well, that, that was a great report. And uh, the message is really terrible. And I love these guys, Professor. You know, get off your trip, Jack, Professor. He's at Houston Tillerson. One of these guys that never works a day in his life and has a uh, tenured professor. But he has a bow tie, and he's yeah, going to tell us what to do, though. By yeah, the way, it exactly. turned out we went down and looked. He doesn't even live in it. It's all a big joke, and he admitted, I don't really stay there. So he's not even living in the dumpster to tell us how great it is. He goes and lives at his house. Yeah, again, you know, he's professors, you know, profess what? And, and, and again, they could be total jerks, which most of, a lot of them are, because just to make this clear, if the education system was working in this country, particularly for what people are paying for it, you think we'd be in the problems that we are? So you get a clown like this guy 
again, who's never worked a day in his life and only shoots his mouth off and tells everybody what to do, what to think, and to give them money so he could never get fired because he's protected. Well, no, that's how you're going to get more money to pay his job and the $200,000 degree is to live in a coffin while he lives in a house. Right. So, again, when you go back to what I just read, that story that broke on Bloomberg today about this guy from Nicole Miller saying that if you're making $35,000 a year, stop complaining. You could be living in China, and if you were making that kind of money, you'd be rich. What? That, this guy, you know, th this guy should be brought up for some mental... Oh, yeah, if you want prosperity, you're evil. Uh, it's so sexy to be poor, except for the elite are all in red carpets and private jets. Let's talk to Reese in Texas. He has a question for Joel Salente. Reese, thanks for holding. Go ahead, you're on the air with the Trends Forecaster. Yes, sir. Um, I had a question about why uh, our country pushes the petrodollar so much. Well, because that keeps the dollar in charge, Gerald. Yeah, that, that was a deal made by Kissinger uh, back in the 70s when, the, uh, when they took us off the gold standard. And that was the deal that was made. So that's why they do it with the petrodollar. That bailed out the United States. And I had one more question for you. Um, is there a way to uh, get rid of debt that someone basically ripped you off? Like, basically, I recently went to Full Sail Online, and they basically stole $8,000 from me to take yeah. core classes that were completely useless. Yeah, and no, they're I, now charging I, me 34.57% in Well, they're trying to pass laws to make you pay back student loans, but that's illegal under our Constitution. You can't have indentured servitude or debtor prisons, Gerald. We don't have any constitution anymore. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, they brought back debtor prisons in Illinois. That yeah, yeah, it is a debtor's prison. I mean, what, these kids have taken them 20 years to pay off their college. America is a debtor's prison now. That's what I mean. You know, so there's no constitution anymore. And, and you know, I want to mention this, too, about the game being rigged. And So I'm not making this up or you're not making it up. This is from the Wall Street Journal last Friday. Speed traders get an edge. So that shows you how these people buy information and they get like they're trading, they're trading in nanoseconds to beat everybody else. And the language is very, very uh, Orwellian. High frequency traders have been paying to get direct access to market move, moving news releases, a practice that can give firms the ability to trade fractions of a second ahead of less, here we go, fleet Footed, footed investors. Less feet footed investors means you suckers that think that you're getting into the game and playing it. Now, it even gets worse. That's Friday. Today, the article is traders with need for speed turn to laser beams. That's how ridiculous this is trading in the markets. And then when you put the whole package together, who owns the companies? Well, Heinz, well, they were bought out by Buffett and that Brazilian group. And then you keep going down the list. All the companies in America, the big ones, many of them, aren't owned by the people or the companies or the stockholders. They're owned by private equity groups. Hedge funds. It's a multinational takeover. They use derivative garbage money to buy it all. Gerald, I want to come back in five more minutes. I know you got to go. Five more minutes of overdrive. Gerald Salente's Trends Journal. I want to show it on screen for TV viewers right now. A global wake up call. 10 powerful transformational trends in 2014. I got one stock market question from Jeremy, and then I want to get into those trends quickly. Some of the big trends. Uh, stay with us. Infowars.com. Trendsjournal.com is his site. Nightly news tonight, Visit 7 o'clock central. Live.com today. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The K-Tor hand crank generator to charge up key equipment.
equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic Relocation, 3rd Edition by Joel Skousen. When Disaster Strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com. And your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com. Coast. 